Good afternoon again, Tube of Views. We are out here at the lot, and uh, another one of those little moments where I have purchased something in the hopes of being able to make a dime or two. Um, so basically what we got is a Cub Cadet CC760 ES uh, walk-behind mower. A uh, guy had bought it brand new, put it into storage, uh, never touched grass. Put, uh, put it into storage, pulled it out this year to start it, ran it for a while, and it uh, seemed to have seized up on him is what he said. Um, I got it for 200 bucks, and uh, the big thing that I wanted to see when I bought it was, of course, this, which confirms that this thing has probably never seen grass, just like he said. So, at any rate, the hope is that uh, we can get it freed up and sell it, since this is a spendy mower, brand new. First thing I noticed was the residue here, which I thought might indicate that it had uh, hydrolocked, um, stuck float in the carburetor, but I don't believe that to be the case because when I pulled the dipstick, there was next to no oil on it. So I believe that he probably bought it new, and of course they don't have these full of oil when you buy them, probably did not put oil in it or did not, obviously didn't check the oil when he uh, pulled it back out of storage. So I guess we're gonna do our best to see if uh, we can get this motor to free up and hopefully it doesn't knock. Um, and if it does, then I guess we'll have to decide from there whether we, uh, well, I guess whether we uh, replace a motor or go into the motor and try and replace bearings or, uh, you know, we'll just have to kind of see and go. But uh, at any rate, let's get moving. So first thing we're gonna do, take the cover off here. And the reason being is that since it doesn't have a pull cord, we want to see, and it's just electric start, which the battery is good. What we want to see here is, um, well, what we want to be able to do, excuse me, is get, uh, get a wrench on the, the crankshaft um, bolt there and uh, see if we can get it to move back and forth. Now, the way it moves and how it's stuck really indicate to us whether it's stuck in the cylinder or on the crank. And that'll give us an indication of kind of which direction we're going to need to go. Ooh, wind out here today. Kind of been that way last, uh, last little bit. Um, just can't seem to catch a break with the weather. It's rainy, it's snowy, it's cold. And the sun will come out one minute and be gone the next. However, it is supposed to be nice tomorrow, which means we should be able to make some headway. Uh, so, let's get another wrench here. Okay, that should be the right size. Now, before we turn this any further, we are going to go ahead and add oil until it's full. I went with a 1030, and that may change depending on how it runs. The reason I went with a little thicker oil is to try and maybe take up any crankshaft uh, knocking that may be going on once we get this thing going and uh, just a little bit better ring seal if there's um, any scoring in the cylinders. Uh, Say to remember when you're buying stuff like this, you know, it's all a gamble. You never know. You buy something and you hope that you're going to be able to turn it around and make some money, but you really just never know. Essentially, somebody bought it and uh, it's broken and so they sell it you know because they don't know you know what to do and um, rather than fix it and so I buy it much cheaper than I could if it was in running working condition and hopefully I can get it going and you don't always win these gambles but uh, you also can't make any money if you don't uh, you don't take a risk or two. So, kind of like that Blue Ranger, um, that was another one of those that I, I took a gamble, I knew I was taking a gamble, and it turns out that the motor's toast. But, we always try and make lemonade with that kind of stuff because 
what you uh, essentially what you're hoping for in that case in a case like that Ranger is that you'll run into possibly a parts vehicle that uh, you can use to try and recoup some of the costs and I may have to sit on it for quite a while but at this point in time I've already got money into it and it's not as much as I can get scrap it so ah, these long dipstick tubes hey look there's the sun don't look at it you'll scare it away these long dipstick tubes make it really difficult to read the oil level because the oil sticks to the sides of them and skews your readings. But I think I got enough in there now. So we're just going to kind of feel it. Nope, oh, can't go that way. Obviously, we're going to have more leverage going this route than we will if we were to try and crank it over with the starter or even if it had a pull cord for that matter. I'm going to roll it over, and hopefully we can get it to kind of go, go free. And it actually feels like it might be freeing up, which would be a good sign. What we should do, for all intents and purposes, is actually pull that spark plug out. Um, reason being because then we're not fighting against compression, we can get a little bit more accurate idea of just how much resistance is being given by the crank and so on and so forth. So, it's actually what we're going to do. Um, especially considering that this guy had filled the cylinder with some penetrating oil. I'm probably going to have to clean up that spark plug anyways. See you. Let's do that. Whew. He had definitely loaded up the cylinder with some chisel Ugh. yeah not sure what that smells like to be honest but we're gonna keep rolling roll it a bit It seems to be freeing up. I'm really hoping that this will work. Huh? We're getting some action. Getting better, for sure. Probably could have used a little ATF or something in there if this were an older mower. Um, help break down any of the carbon deposits, but uh, where this is brand new, I don't suspect that there'd be anything in there that would need to be broken down so just 1030 it is yeah They're moving more than it was yeah we might get something yet better each time I try it. Again, I have to remind you guys this thing is most likely going to knock or make noise the major purpose here is to just see that we can get it to turn over that there is some usable parts obviously inside there <clears throat> we won't necessarily go straight into the bottom end we want to do some diagnosis and some try and some things first before we go to that point so is going to be maybe all right. So now we're going to
going to go ahead and pull the dipstick and we'll just double check our oil levels and look for any major metal shavings on the dipstick but like I say we may very well get them. I have seen motors several times that have locked up even on the bottom end and have come out of it now not to say that there is not going to be somewhere um, and that it will drastically affect the life of the engine but just that you can get it running <laughs> being of course that uh, as long as I can get it running then I can sell it be honest with the uh, with the purchaser and let them know what happened and so on and so forth and you know move on from there and still be able to make some money with minimal input uh, once again it doesn't always work that way but we hope The thing I want to make clear though is when you're doing things like this, kind of in a top job, put it together kind of sense, the right thing to do is to be honest with the person that you're selling it to. Don't, lie to Don't tell them, you know, some fib about how it's brand new, never been touched, because that just kind of makes a bad name for yourself. And you want to be able to sell stuff again and again, not just one time. So just in the interest of your own conscience and, and doing the right thing, make sure if you're doing something like this for yourself that you're, that you're honest with the person you're selling it to. And sell it at a reasonable price as well. Otherwise, you're just another screw job. And that's not my goal at all. So, plug back in it. Let's see if we can... Uh, See if we got maybe some compression. Whoa! I did not expect that. Holy moly, I didn't even choke it. That's awesome. Sweet. That is flipping sweet. Okay, well, let's put the cover back on. Let's put the cover back on and uh, see if we can't make it run a little longer. That's. I, uh, be honest with you, I really did not expect that. That's very, very cool. Um, boy, I'm excited about that. Like, really excited.
Hello there, viewers. I would dare say we got a winner. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so we're actually going to run it a little bit and make sure that uh, yeah, we'll run it a bit and make sure that it's not going to seize up on us. And yeah, I think we'll be all right. I'll probably change the oil filter and try and gather any oil chunks that are. There's some metal chunks or metal pieces that might be in there and yeah turn it around sell it make some money so until another video i hope you guys will do all of the things that you have been doing thus far rate comment subscribe and uh we'll see you guys in another video